today is actually a bit of a sad day for me because this is your last puncty bite and for some of you this is the last puncty bite of your senior year and it's it's going to be sad to see you go and I know on to very wonderful things but it is hard a little bit to see you go so on a happy note, I should say, I am on my way home. As many of you knew, I was in Steamboat this weekend and I'm driving on my way home and I had a weekend that was filled with microorganisms, actually. I didn't realize or didn't think about a lot the hydrothermal or geothermal areas in Steamboat and a lot of microbial life here as well, even though Yellowstone gets the the major kudos for that. There's a lot of interesting soda springs here and a lot of hot springs with uh, unique microbial life. And in fact, the pHs of some of the regions here are slightly alkaline. So more similar to say the lower geyser basin areas of Yellowstone than uh, to the Norris type geyser basins. So that was pretty cool. I got to go by a bike ride um, next to some of those hydrothermal areas. And then we also went and did some cross skiing and I was really taken by the extent of the parasitic lichen that has taken over a lot of the fir trees and it looks very similar to witch's hair and I'm wondering if it is some type of Alectoria. I couldn't find any evidence of, of that type of fungus being found in the Rocky Mountains but um, I also was running out of G3 or 3G signal um, in the car but very fascinating and microbial filled weekend for me. I hope it was for you as well and let's dive into some of what's going on in our next couple of weeks. We will be covering this week's lab 23 and 24 for most of you though we will see um, Katie and Craig go on to lab 25. So we'll be progressing to the point of the practical exam in this puncty bite and I want to call your attention all the way towards that practical exam which will be on the 23rd or 24th for most of us and that practical exam will probably need to be set up on Friday the 20th so if you could plan to have your questions chosen by the 16th or the 17th that would be absolutely phenomenal and that will allow us to get whatever media we haven't already inoculated inoculated during open lab on the 20th and then that that of course will be the, the day in which Kelsey and Noah are there to work on that but it may also be a day that some of the others of you decide to come in and help because maybe you need to inoculate a few more things for your practical exam. Uh, this coming Friday will be the open lab for Sarah, Alaya, and Mike, so just get coverage there for that one. And please do find somebody to cover you if you can't, if you know you're not going to be able to come. I think it's very hard for one TA to handle open lab. It's just a lot of running, and sometimes I'm dealing with meetings that are one-on-one -on -one that a student comes in to talk to me and sometimes I'm not being able to run as much so it just helps to have more than one person there especially from the noon to one time slot we're okay from one to two and so a few, uh, a few other up and coming things just in terms of getting your final grades done we'd like to finish those off towards the end of the week on the 27th to 28th and get those submitted and then that enables me to get them sent to Dr. Mani so that he gets those he's able to get his grades in whenever he needs to. We do have the poster presentations coming up on the 30th so if you don't have a final exam from 10:15 to 12:15 on the 30th I would love to have you come to the poster presentations and even potentially help grade if it's something you're up for. And along those lines, uh, thank you so much, Sarah, for volunteering to help grade with the final exam. I know that for some of you that won't be possible, but if anybody has a light finals load and you are able to grade even just for a couple of hours on Tuesday or Wednesday of finals week, I would love you forever, not that I don't already love you forever. Okay, good. So I think that covers the majority of our schedule. Let's take a moment to go through the TA guidelines for lab 23, 24, and then the TA guideline for 25 and 26 is combined into one guideline. So that's why I'm going ahead and just making this our last puncty bite. Lab 23 we already talked quite a bit about, but I did want to make just a couple of reminders that you do want to be familiar with the membrane filtration setup. Even if I do demo that for you, it's important to be aware of how it goes together so that you can help your students and we don't have any wastewater treatment plant sewage backlogs, right? That's never a fun day. Um, when, <laughs> when students connect that up to the vacuum and it's spraying back at them, never a fun day. So let's make sure that we do get that set up correctly and everything is passing through as it should. 
The other thing that can be a little hard for students on this day is reading their Octorolone gels. It, it takes a little bit of a good eye to see the bands of precipitation on those gels. So help them hold them up for, for them, show them where those are, maybe even show them one on the overhead. And I can help too with that if I'm not running around with anything else. The lecture for Water Micro is a fairly fun one. If you don't think it feels fun, then have me do it because I think it's very fun. Um, there, as I said, there are a lot of extra guidelines for this particular lecture. Um, I mentioned last time one of my TAs rewrote these at one point and really did a bang up job of finding a lot of helpful tidbits to include in the TA guidelines. Now Lab 24 continues our search of environmental microbiology and there are a couple of follow-up things here that tend to get forgotten. At the end of the semester here it's really hard to keep students focused on what they're doing so I find that it's very helpful if we can go around and, and, and talk to them individually in groups, um, in, in small groups or individually about what they need to get done that day. One of the things that they do have to do on this day is to follow up on their water microbiology. That means that they do need to take a positive test and do their confirmed test. Uh, it also means that they need to count on their membrane filtration, their colonies there, and remind them that they only want to count the coliforms, that is the lactose fermenting bacteria, which are the darker colonies. It's easy to get caught up in trying to count all the colonies on those membrane filtrations but really we only want the dark ones counted because those are the ones that are fermenting lactose. We want them to, even if they didn't get a positive result, say they did tap water, we do want them to streak for, for isolation on a McConkie so we can share the tubes from the positive results so that everyone gets a chance to see how the um, MTFM method is followed up by the confirmed and then finally the completed test. It just helps to do it when it comes time to answering questions about what that test entails. So just a few pointers on that one as well as um, procedural pointers. We don't want everybody jumping into each one of the experiments on this. We'd actually like to split it so that each bench is just doing one. So we will write that up on the board, but we can remind them as well that they only do streptomyces isolation or they do other bacteria or they do mold. And that's um, pretty straightforward as long as we remember to remind them of that before they go collecting media for all three of the tests. I think that covers a majority of Lab 24. This is a pretty beefy lecture, especially if you don't like soil microbiology. I happen to love it, so if you're having trouble at the end of the semester, things are getting busy, as I know they do this time of year, have me do that lecture. I don't mind at all. But then you could go ahead and do maybe Lab 25, which is a very quick, very straightforward lecture on, on food microbiology. So that one is one that certainly is easy even if you have a, a time pressed week ahead of you. Uh, this is another thing that I've highlighted on here. Towards the end of the semester, students struggle more and more with getting their data written on the board and getting their data written into their lab notebook. So encourage them to fill out the tables that you have up on the board to summarize their soil micro experiments. Otherwise, I find that it never gets done. So we might just take time to do that even at the very beginning of the hour. Uh, there is a portion of the lecture that helps them to figure their titers um, in the per gram of soil. And so to do that conversion that gets them per mil to per gram. We can go through that portion of the lecture and even pause if we'd like and then finish that lecture off after they've gotten their data written up on the board. And that might be a good way to ensure that we actually do get through that soil micro stuff. Um, also during lab 25, we will do the Snyder test assay in addition to the food anti antimicrobials. If anybody has a food at home, like if you have an extract, a spice or anything, um, cranberry juice that's unsweetened, anything like that that you want to bring to your lab, that would be absolutely phenomenal. I try to bring as many as I can for that lab, um, but if you have something else, that would be great. And remember, it is also the lab where we'll be doing the Snyder's test. Please, if you do have a student who is really, really grossed out by spitting into a tube, uh, don't have them do this test because we don't want anyone really just getting sick on us or something like that. So that leads us into lab 26, which is the last of our labs. And for lab 26, I believe I'm signed up to do all of the lectures. And that's kind of nice because it gives you that last day to sort of debrief and make sure that your practical exam is ready to go. And we'll be having that practical exam the very next week.
Okay, I think that's everything. Please make sure that if you haven't gotten timesheets submitted with the appropriate amount of hours and that's applicable to you, that you do do that um, so that we don't end up the semester not having shown them that we appreciate the stipends that we get. That's very important to me. So please make sure that you have claimed the hours that you've worked and that everyone knows that you're working hard for that small stipend. It's very, very important. Have a fantastic rest of your Sunday and I can't wait to see you this week.